Hey everyone, today I have my friend Claire with me and we are going to be doing a kind of different video for you guys. Now she has a degree in chemistry and is a lot more science minded than I am. So she is going to be helping me explain to you guys what parabens are. And you've probably mostly heard that word because it's been kind of a really big buzzword in the cosmetics and beauty industry, especially in the last two years, you've probably been seeing a lot of products that advertise being paraben free. And if you're like me, at some point you were probably wondering, what does this mean? If things are paraben free, does that mean they're bad for me? So Claire is going to help explain all of that in a minute and hopefully you all will learn something new today. The first basic question that I think we're going to want to know about is really what are parabens and what is the role that they play in our cosmetic and beauty products? Parabens are a very easily and very cheaply synthesized molecule that are added to almost any beauty product you have and their whole role is to keep things from growing in water. So lotions, toothpaste, makeup, personal lubricants, anything with a lot of water, you're going to want to have a paraben in there to keep gross stuff from growing. That includes mold, fungus, bacterial colonies, anything like that. <laughs> yeah. So then it seems like parabens are pretty important because I think I can speak for all of us that we don't want bacteria and fungus and mold growing in our products. So when we pick up things from the store that are paraben free, what is protecting our products from getting all those gross things in them? Um, things like tea tree oil, grape seed oil, grapefruit seed oil, um, other plant derived natural antimicrobial, antibacterial things. Um, the problem with this is you have to add a lot more. So A, it's going to be more expensive and B, you might end up with a lot of something that your skin doesn't react well to. So if you're someone who's very sensitive to oils, um, I don't like a lot of oil in my products because I already have oily skin and I tend to break out easily when there's more oil. Or say you just don't react well to tea tree oil, um, this can be problematic. So those are the two risks you run when you're going with a more natural solution. Now I know one of the main things that I want to know and that you guys are probably interested in is what are the main concerns and dangers surrounding parabens that have given them this kind of bad name in the cosmetics and beauty industry and caused brands to kind of avoid them and then you know really advertise on their products that they're paraben free because it seems like it must be something pretty scary. Yeah I mean the scariest concern is of course cancer which um, these days we hear about a lot of almost everything causing cancer. Um, more commonly, they can cause allergic reactions, but that's no more common than any skin allergic reaction that can lead to rosacea, contact dermatitis, so not that scary, but the main concern is cancer. Well, cancer sounds pretty serious, and I would hope that the FDA and the other organizations wouldn't be allowing parabens to be in our products if they were definitely going to be giving us cancer. So can you elaborate a little more on that and what the risks really are? Okay, so the main thing that people were concerned about with parabens and probably the biggest scare was um, with breast cancer. They were finding in samples of cancerous tissue that there were about 20 nanograms of parabens per gram of, of cancerous breast tissue. Um, this is kind of alarming, but I think also if you were to take a sample of my breast tissue right now, which would be gross, you would find parabens in there because I use deodorant every day and they have a tendency to build up. So while it is kind of scary that these things are building up in our bodies, it doesn't necessarily mean they're causing tumors. Um, one thing that has been proven though is that parabens do react with UVB rays. So if you're out in the sun a lot, if you live in Florida, um, really anyone who is outside ever, which is everyone, um, you should look for things that don't have parabens in it because those parabens can react with UVB rays and then lead to things like DNA degeneration, also um, premature aging, and maybe eventually skin cancer. So that's horrible. But as far as breast cancer goes, um, they haven't been able to necessarily prove it. Does this mean it's definitely not happening? No. So that's something you kind of have to decide on your own. So what you're saying is that it has been shown that parabens have been found in tumors, in breast cancer, mm -hmm. but that there really haven't been enough studies to say parabens cause cancer. Right. Exactly. Okay. When I was doing some research online about parabens, I had read that they can mimic estrogen. So I was just kind of wondering what's the deal with that. 
Basically the deal with that is, yes, that does happen, but it's a very, very low level. Um, you hear more about phytoestrogens, which are things that mimic estrogen, which are found in plants, um, soy, tofu, which is, you know, soy. Um, and that is a much higher level and put, poses a much greater threat than something like parabens as far as like the amount of estrogen it'll actually mimic. Hmm. So don't eat tofu. Now that we've kind of gone over parabens, what their role is, what their danger is, what is your personal opinion on using them in our everyday products? I'm gonna keep using them. Um, I tend, I splash around in acid all day at my job, so I tend to not be that concerned about a lot of um, chemicals, and maybe that is foolish on my part, but there's no real research to back up that parabens are causing cancer. Um, I probably will look for them more in face creams and foundations and things that go on my face because I don't want my skin to age due to UV rays. Um, but other than that, as far as shampoos, as far as deodorants go, um, as far as body washes, I'm really not that concerned. I'd be more concerned about things, A, um, having bacterial colonies grow in them, B, mold, C, fungus. These things gross me out and concern me way more than parabens do, um, simply because I haven't found a journal study that clearly states that there is a link between parabens and cancer. On the other hand, it's completely a personal choice if parabens scare you, don't buy things with parabens. It's gonna be more expensive and it's gonna be harder to find, but again, it's your body, it's totally your personal choice. I'm not afraid of them, so I'm gonna keep using them. So this might be kind of a funny analogy to make, but tell me if you agree or not. If someone smokes, let's say, one or two cigarettes a week mm -hmm. versus a pack a day smoker, could we mm -hmm. kind of look at parabens like that? And that's a little similar to what you said about avoiding it when you can. Yeah. Do you think that's a good idea for those of us who don't want to run out and repurchase everything we have? Yeah, I think picking your battles, doing your research, seeing which products it actually matters in. Um, toothpaste, there are parabens in toothpaste. I don't think it is a concern at all there. You don't swallow toothpaste, you don't leave it in your mouth for any appreciable amount of time, you use it to get gunk off your teeth and then you spit it out. Um, things like face creams, again, I would be a little more careful with that because of, one, there is a proven reaction with UVB rays that can mess up your DNA and nobody wants that. So again, just pick your battles, kind of right. determine what's most important for you and what your, your biggest concerns are and kind of make your decisions from there. Right, and I think I agree with Claire um, in the sense that for me, I'm gonna pick my battles. And I also agree with her that I'm gonna try to buy my foundations, my um, facial care items without parabens as much as I can. And while we're seeing more things that are paraben free, they're not very widely available. And a lot of the products that are paraben free can be quite expensive. So. I'm with Claire in that I think pick your battles. Again, it's your face, it's your body, and if it's something that concerns you, avoid them, or maybe you could care less, then just do whatever you want. If you are someone who feels a little more concerned about parabens and you want to avoid them, I will have a blog post linked below where I will go into more detail about brands that are a little more affordable and easier to get, for instance, Tarte Cosmetics and the Neutrogena Naturals line. So if you want more information on products and brands to buy that are paraben free, be sure to check for the link below. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful and at least informative to some degree. And thank you to Claire for joining me to explain this probably a lot better than I would have been able to. Claire actually has her own blog, noreplicators.com, and I will put the link below. And she is also a writer for ExoJane. So if you like Claire, you can get more of her if you want to. And let me know below what you guys think about parabens, if this has sparked anything for you, concern, or if you're one of those people, like we said, could care less, let me know that too. And as always, be sure to subscribe and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye.